Hi there, Chris at Moto Legends, Trout in the Cap and all of that. Here today to talk about RI's first entry into the retro helmet market. It's the RI Rapide Neo. Now we obtained this helmet about four or five months ago. We actually had one um, sent to us directly from Japan. Um, we've done a fair amount of testing in it, we've ridden in it, we've got to know it reasonably well. We did the review up at Newlands Corner, which is a, a bike place up here in the hills. Um, it was a very windy day, it was a pretty rubbish review, you couldn't hear half of what, what we were saying. So this morning I'm going to talk in a little bit more detail about it. If you're a customer of ours, you'll know what our views are on most retro helmets. Um, we've, we sell a number of retro lids. We're not always particularly keen on the way they work. Um, in truth, some of them don't fit particularly well, some of them aren't awfully comfortable. Um, they're noisy, they can let the rain in, um, they have visor seals that you can get your finger in. Uh, no one has produced the retro helmet to date that has changeable cheek pads, none has a pinlock visor and so on. And so for many years we've been trying to get a manufacturer or manufacturers to make a high quality, sophisticated 21st century retro helmet. Looks as though the first into the market is going to be Arai with the Rapide Neo. Although, Shui will be following up in a few months' time, I think by um, April 2020, they should have in the market their new Shui Glamster. Um, we've also had one of those in recently. We've done some riding in it. We've got to know that as well. So we're going to talk you through that a wee bit later. Let me put these aside. So the Repeat Neo, pretty much what we were wanting. What we wanted was a classic round dome 80s style helmet, in fact more or less the kind of helmet that I suppose Arai might have made back in period. Um, this is in accordance with that in a number of, of, of respects, um, a completely round, round dome, no aerofoils, no spoilers on it. Um, it's got a slightly different nose feature to the one that I suppose we had anticipated or had ideally wanted um, and I think what's happened here, the Japanese designer wanted to cross over between classic bikes and custom bikes and cruisers. So he's put on the front here a slightly, I suppose you might call it Samson, Simpson Bandit-esque nose piece. Not exactly what we were looking for, but it doesn't detract from the, from the helmet. It probably in truth um, increases its appeal. Um, it is obviously, as it's an Arai, it's a safe hel helmet. It's gonna be uh, a much better helmet to ride in at speed than most of the other retro helmets on the market. Um, Sean has done a lot of commuting. He commutes in and out of London about an hour a day. Um, he reckons it's a, a very cosseting, very comfortable helmet, pretty quiet. Um, only when you open these eyebrow vents uh, does that let a bit, of, um, a bit of extra air in and a bit of extra noise, but if you keep those closed, it's pretty quiet. Um, you have an extra vent here. Um, a closable vent doesn't do a great deal, but it will let some air in. Um, this version, which was sent over from Japan, as I said, um, has a mechanism for tear-offs, but the actual helmet, when it arrives with us just before Christmas, that's Christmas 2019, will um, have pinlock pins, it's pinlock prepared, and there will be a pinlock 120 in the box. Um, one of the things that we are going to be particularly excited about is that from day one, we will be able to fit different sized cheek pads and headliners into this. And later in this review, Sean is going to talk through that in a little bit more detail. Um, so the helmet is pretty much what we'd, we'd expected. Um, you know, a few nice, nice touches. We really like this um, side mechanism for, for the visor. Our eye have historically always used their um, visor covers here. Um, they said they would never change. They have done for this helmet. We actually think this looks right and we suspect it might even contribute to making the, the helmet quieter than it might have been. So um, ironically, they've done that and we think it's an improvement. In terms of comparing this with the Shui, um, when you put them side by side, this is a much bigger and a much heavier helmet. Um, we weighed this in, it's 1550 grams. The Shui Glamster uh, was 1150, so a 400 gram difference. It's also a much smaller lid. And I think that's merely um, a reflection upon the fact that 
Arai make their helmets in a different way. Arai's have a very hard shell, it's not a particularly shock absorbing shell, so they compensate for that with a particularly thick EPS. Um, you'll see in the interview with Sean at later on when we have both helmets side by side that they are quite different looking. Um, in terms of which helmet we, we prefer, a jury's out, we'll have to ride in, in them both. Um, I think Sean has developed a view that this is probably a helmet he would feel happier commuting in. I personally happen to think that the Glamster is, because it's lighter and easier to live with, it's going to be a, a helmet that's more fun for weekend riding. Um, but they're both hitting exactly the market that we wanted them, that them to hit, so we're pleased with both helmets. So in terms of pricing, um, the Arai is going to be in its plain colours and it's got a range of um, a number of fairly staid colours. Um, it's going to be 450. Um, bright red, by the way, is a colour that's exclusive in the UK to Motor Legends, so we're quite excited about that. There are some quite wild graphics that look very Japanese 1970s influenced. They're going to be priced at 529. In comparison with the Shui, the Shui will start in its plain colours at £400 and go up to £450 for the graphical treatments. Um, ironic perhaps that when we looked at the Shui, we first thought that's a little bit more expensive than we had anticipated because that's £50 more than the Shui RYD, which in some ways has some features that are lacking on the Glamster. Um, but we look at the Arai and go £450 for an Arai, that seems like great value. So that's a little bit unfair. I think £400 overall is a pretty good, good price in this market for the Shui. 450 also not bad for the Arai. Anyway, what we're going to do now, I'm going to pass over to Sean, who's going to talk us through how here at Moto Legends we can tailor fit the Arai um, that repeat at Neo to fit just about any kind of head shape. So, Sean, over to you. So, behind this very simple outer shell is a very sophisticated inner lining. You've got cheek pads and a headliner, which is standard among all helmets, but they're not just lumps of foam. They're carved out in very specific forms to match the shape of your face and your head. So, these cheek pads are sprung, They've got a little part, um, a part in here that's uh, loaded, so they actually hug the face better. They're interchangeable, so um, these are a, a 20 mil, a standard in this helmet. But say you had a, a slimmer face or a fatter face, you could you could put a thicker or thinner liner in. Sorry, cheek pads. Um, the same with the headliners. The one in here. Is a 10 mil. Say I'm not quite um, small enough in the head to fit in a smaller size, but this one going up a size is a little bit on the loose side, then you can bring in a 12 mil headliner. So with thicker cheek pads and a thicker headliner, you've moved yourself more comfortably into a medium rather than being too tight in a small. Um, and, and you can do that across all of the sizes sizes um, so if you're a small and you can also so what I'm trying to say is there there are many many changes you can make to these beyond this even if you thought I'm almost perfect in a small but there's some really small changes I would like to make to make this a better fit so your uh, occipital bone here for example if that's not particularly pronounced and you're finding that this helmet when it's sat on your head can move forward and you want to anchor that better then you can add extra pads to this part here so we've got a whole range of helmet specific pads you can really customize a fit and there's not many people that do this and it's not something you'd want to ever undertake by yourself at home so again this is this is us basically telling you come into the shop and get a custom fit so if your cheek pads in a 35, which is the thickest size they do, are still too slim, you can add something to it. And if you found that you were not quite a 30 mil and you weren't, uh, and then the 25 wasn't quite right, you, you can add 2.5 mil uh, to a cheek pad. And some people, you know, you've got one cheek bigger than another cheek. It doesn't matter. Everyone's got 
individual changes in their in their face and their head so what this really means is if you've got one of those heads you find it hard to get a helmet to really fit you well there are so many changes that we can make to these uh, sort of micro changes almost to make this a perfect fitting helmet you've got small um, handed pieces here that will go on the top of the helmet here uh, sorry on the top of the liner both on the left and right side and what that does is it raises the helmet off your head and that's the aim is to center your eyes in the aperture so uh, and that means that if you're leant further forward you're not just looking straight at this if the helmet sits too low on your face all you're going to see is the EPS liner here um, you've got some padding for the forehead so if you these these are a slightly less of a long oval shape than a showy so if your head is slightly longer front to back and you found that you put this on and it was just a little bit too movement too much movement in the sides you've got side pads as well equally if you found you had a little bit too much room front to back and changing a side was too dramatic we can add some more padding on the front more padding on the back so you know you can see there is you, you can pretty much fit this helmet on anyone. Um, the other clever thing about this, which is actually something really easy to tweak, and if, even if you've got an arrow at home, you might find that this is on your, your headliner. Um, these little tabs here, kind of like arrowheads, and as you pull them, they hold in position. And essentially what that does is it, lifts the helmet so if you're um if you're finding that the helmet is sat too low it can lift it as well which means you don't always need to add these extra parts but we've got everything here to make one of these fit you better than basically any helmet you've ever tried on so uh i guess we'll kind of have a little comparison now between this and maybe uh the showy and just just show you uh what 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 the differences are here we are back in the shop. I'm here with my colleague, Sean, who's our Hello. shop manager. Um, I've now been out in the Shuey Glamster. Um, I've done a few miles in the Arai. Sean has ridden both helmets, but he's an Arai man, historically. He's done some commuting in the Arai, so he has more of a valid viewpoint than me. What I would say is that Sean is one of the best deconstructors of motorcycling products that, that I've come across. In fact, some of the manufacturers now come to see us here to get Sean's opinion on new products. He can put a helmet on or a jacket on and he will spot immediately the things that aren't, aren't going to work on the bike. So I'm um, always interested to get Sean's opinion on, on the helmet. Um, so Sean, you've ridden both. What's your general view? Uh, general view really is just Arai feels like the sort of helmet you could use every single day. Whereas showy feels more like a weekend ride, something. It just this this seems to encapsulate you more. It seems slightly quieter. Um, it it feels sort of more all day comfy. Um, but that that's going to you know head shapes and things will change. I must admit that feels. Whereas this feels like a helmet designed to appeal to the kind of rider who's going to be riding the kind of retro bikes we're talking about. That feels in some ways, and I'm not sure whether it's a good or a bad thing. But that feels like an Arai of old. In fact, I'm not sure it's much different to an Arai of old. They've just taken all the bits off. They've smoothed it out. Um, but it does feel, it feels like a heavier, it feels like a more solid helmet. In fact, this morning I weighed these. That's 1,550 grams. That's 1,150. 400 grams is, is quite a bit. Uh, yes, that is quite a lot. That's a good few bars of chocolate. Yep, yep. <laughs> so... Um, partly that's just down to the construction of the Arai versus the construction of the Shoei. Um, they have a much harder outer shell and Shoei use a softer shell which enables them to have a lighter. So because it's got a harder shell, because my understanding is that Arai sh shells are hard, they will take repeated impacts better than many other helmets, but because that doesn't absorb energy, they then have a thicker EPS. Yeah, so the thicker EPS um, it, it's great for comfort. Um, because you don't get the harder EPS pushing on places in your head, um, but it does result in a heavier helmet. And if, if you're going to get problems with your neck or, you know, Sunday rides, I think lightweight helmets help. And that probably also explains the difference in size, because there's a difference in weight, but when you look at the two helmets side by side, both of these are, are mediums, and that's a substantially larger 
helmet. Yeah, and although they do have four shell sizes in this, I think it's going to be three or four in that no, as well. No, it's three. It's three in the Shuey. So it's it's not just a it's not just a one size fits all helmet, which people often think okay. of with a larger helmet. Um, I've ridden in this, it was somewhat of an unfair test unfortunately, this is a prototype helmet, it didn't have a chin guard, it was a wee bit noisy but I think that's maybe an unfair um, conclusion to come to. Um, Sean, you reported that you thought this was fairly quiet until you opened the eyebrow vents. Yeah, these vents, they're great for getting air in but with air comes noise so um, if you're really hot, just wear earplugs when you open those vents. Um, they do work though, they work very well, um, but with those closed, I think these cheek pads come up quite high on the face and they just block off a lot of um, wind noise. You've also got a small chin curtain here. This just wraps around, these cheek pads are sprung um, and that helps hug the face. So um, overall I found it a reasonably quiet helmet. Um, most our eyes have got side pods, which is what makes them noisy and these are not the same as the other side pods you get on other ROIs so again another thing to help cut down noise. I don't think that's what they've intended, no, I just no. think it's, a, it's yep. something that's happened with the style. Yeah, in fact Arai had always said they'd never change those, those side, uh, side pods, ironic that they should do something retro and then find that actually it works <laughs> even better. Yeah. must admit I was in some ways surprised, I don't know whether I was disappointed when I first saw this helmet because um, this I would call a, a classic 80s racing helmet shape, the kind of thing that Barry Sheen and, and yeah. all those guys from that era would have worn in terms of shape. This has got this funny nose on. With um, Simpson Bandit or something yeah, like that. And I yeah, and I think from what I've heard that the Arai designer, when he designed this helmet, he wanted to have something that could cross over from classic and retro bikes, but also would also work for the modern custom crew. So I think he's been a wee bit more aggressive here. Um, to make the helmet appeal appeal to them. I have to say, if I was going to ride um, with it with one of these, and I think as soon as they, they arrive, I will grab myself a, a Shoei. Um, I kind of prefer this. This is more the helmet that we had always in, envisaged. Um, but I suppose that's that's just a personal taste. But Sean, you know, is there? I can't see a lot of clear blue water between the two helmets. Do you think there's a big difference between them? I just think that if you're a daily user, you want one helmet. That's going to be best for you. If you're the sort of person that wants that, that feels slightly more focused to the custom market. Um, and if you're the kind of person that's tried on or owns a, an X Zero or a um, the Jo, it will feel very familiar, very comfortable. You know, they've both got changeable linings and things, so you can get a good fit on both of them. But I just think that's more. I don't want to say toy because it's not protective, but it just feels like something you wouldn't go touring around Europe on, whereas I think yeah, I does could feel, do that. It, flimsy would be a cruel, a cruel word, but, but in comparison with yeah. that, it feels almost insubstantial. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that has any great bearing, no great, great bearing on safety. Uh, obviously, this is an AIM shell. Um, it's going to be way beyond the ECE to 2205 standard. So, and I'm not sure you can say that about all of the retro helmets. So. Um, from a safety perspective, I don't think you're going to be putting yourself in a difficult position with, with either of these lids. Um, anyway, John, thanks a lot. Um, interesting to get, get your views. So I hope you've enjoyed our review of the Arrive Rapide Neo. We are recording this uh, video um, at the very end of November 2019. At present, we're being told that the helmet itself will arrive with us in the second week of December. That's a notoriously difficult time for goods to come in. It could mean that it, it makes it for Christmas, it could mean that it misses Christmas and we end up only being able to send it out in the new year. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching Sean as he showed us what we could do in terms of fitting them back the helmet and also that the discussion I had had with Sean about the merits of the Glamster versus at the Repeat Neo after that. If you would like to know more about the helmet, visit the website motolegends.com. If you'd like to subscribe to our bulletins in future, every time we get a new product into the building, we do a bulletin to tell everyone about it. Then again, visit the website motorlegends.com. On the front page, you'll find a little box. We call them tiles. And on one of those tiles, you'll find that you'll be able to subscribe easily to future bulletins. Of course, if you prefer to get your information in a video graphic form, then just click on the button below and subscribe to our bulletins. 
same deal. Every time we get an exciting new product, we're going to be making a video about it. So if that's the way you want to receive your information, subscribing to videos is the way. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening. It's been Chris, Motor Legends. Um, we'll talk soon.